Hi, so in this video, I'm going to talk about the 10 most used apps by me in my MacBook. So if you give me a fresh new MacBook, these are the 10 apps which I will definitely install the first time I open my operating system. They make me more productive. These are the 10 most important apps for me, which I definitely need to be a slightly more productive. Most of them are free, but if you need a bit more, you can always pay and get the premium features. Okay, so the number one app in my list is Raycast. So if you open a, any MacBook OS, you will see uh, most of these apps which are, which are come by default. And one of them is uh, the spotlight so spotlight is technically the search app when you open you press command space and you can just search anything in your computer raycast just overrides that app uh, it's created by this raycast team and the main feature of this app is you can have many extensions so you can go to their store and download as many extensions as you want so meme generator this is one of my favorite apps i'll just show you how the extension box so we haven't installed any like new app this is an extension directly in the Raycast app. So let's say uh, I'm creating this site right? using Spotlight in Mac. Uh, here is using Raycast. Okay, so it has already created our meme. So as you can see, this meme is created within like one second using Raycast. So if I need to create any other meme, I can just press command space. If you open like command space, I can just type generate meme. I can select any template. I can fill it up and quickly it will be copied in my clipboard. I can paste it. So it becomes very easy without installing any app. You can just download extensions. There is a huge number of extensions they have available in their store. This is one of the fun ones, but they have other which are very useful. Some of which, which I generally use when I was working with a team was a GitHub extension. Another was a linear extension. You can directly create or view tickets from your command space. You do not have to even open linear app or open in uh, GitHub in website. Another feature of Raycast, which I definitely recommend to everyone is the AI feature. So with this, you can see if I ask AI, right? So there is an AI chat window opens. I have mapped this window to my like command space is Raycast and option space is my AI window. So I can ask like, hey, yeah. So you can see I'm just right now talking to GPT-40 directly in my window. And if I open, if I want to talk to any other model, they have all the other models available. So if I can click on GPT-3.0, Claude 3 Opus, which I technically use most of the times when I'm coding, then there are Llama 3, there are Mixtral. So all the open models which provide their APIs are already enabled. The only downside of using AI is you have to pay the premium price or you have to be a Raycast Pro user, which again is like $20 a month, pretty expensive. If you are already paying for ChatGPT or Claude, it doesn't make much sense to pay for this. But I definitely would recommend uh, using Raycast as your main like search alternate for a spotlight. Okay, so coming back to the second app, which I use. Second app in my list is Notion. So anytime which I have to note down anything, which I have to write an idea or I have to plan my day or my to-do list, Notion is the number one app which I use. So these are like, this is the dashboard which I have created after investing time a lot in Notion dashboards. And this is the template which works really great for me. I'm working on any app, I can just open up and I can create these templates. So if you click on this app template, and so this template is already created by me. So if I have any app idea, this is what I do. I go to Notion, I just open my projects folder. I just click on uh, this button like app template. It will create my app template directly for me. Now this, so this is like, what's the vision, why, who, how. So this is something which I found online after making a lot of apps, what I really want to, my template should look like. So yeah, Notion is the second app, which I definitely need when I'm working. I have tried using a lot of doc apps in my past time. Like I have tried using Obsidian. I have tried using the Apple notes. I have tried almost every app available for note taking. And I always end up using Notion the most because there are a lot of things. One is uh, when I want to share something with someone, I can just quickly click on share button and share the link, make it public. So anyone can come in, comment on it, or even edit or collaborate on, the, on those documents. It provides so many extensibility how you want to make your document, how you want to make your doc database, everything can be customized if you are using Notion. So Notion is always like my go-to app, if anything, I have to do with the docs. Okay, so third most important app for me is Linear. 
So when I was working for a company, uh, we used to use a lot of Jira. So Jira is a like a task management system where developers are assigned some tickets. They have to work on it. You have to see the progress. You can assign like story points. You can move in. So it becomes easier for product managers to see what's happening, what tickets a developer is working on, how much is finished. But Jira is very clunky, very bad software. In my experience, I would never ever use Jira because it's just so complicated. You have to have a like a PhD in even learning how Jira works. And uh, then came Linear. Linear is a startup which I saw it growing in front of me like few years back. And now I'm an active user of Linear. Currently, I'm not working for any company, but still I feel um, to manage your work related products, Linear makes the most sense because here uh, the concepts of cycles, instead of sprints, they call it cycles. So you can see how many uh, things are in currently your scope. Uh, right now, this week's scope is a little bit wonky because I haven't gone and cleaned it up. Uh, but my good sprint was like cycle 33. If you see here, I can see how many tasks I had, how many were done, how many were like. So if you go here, you can see like there were almost 39 tasks, uh, six started, 20 completed. Uh, so six are still in to do. So I can see like how things are going in my project, how many tickets or tasks I can pick and finish. And then there are a lot of things which you can like write in these tickets, you can assign to yourself. So it becomes like a to do list with a lot of information already. This is the number one app which I use for managing my own task or my weekly sprints. OK, so talking about tasks now coming to our fourth app, which is to do list. So to do list is something which I use to write my to do list. And this app I'm using for a very, very long time. The app is very simple. It's just your to-do list. I love it for a couple of reasons. One, it's very quick. It's available in iOS. So my iPhone and my MacBook are always in sync. They have these widgets in Mac. Even if I go into my de desktop, I can directly see my widget and I see what other tasks I have to finish. So if even I have to manage anything in my life, which I do not want to like, remember in my brain, I just put it in the to-do list. To-do list is my go-to app if I have to write any task for my day. Okay, so another app, which is kind of a very new app. I started using it a couple of weeks back and I'm also paying for the pro version of this app and that is called Habit Kit. Technically, this app doesn't make more sense for everyone. But for me, I really like to see my progress in a couple of the things which I want to do. So for example, this is the Habit Kit app. It's very simple. You just see what how many things you have done in a uh, like a GitHub contribution style. I really like how GitHub shows how many commits you have made in the whole week, in the whole year, and you can see the progress of your work. Similarly, in HabitKit, you can just see. So for example, personal AI project, I have worked on this yesterday, yes. A freelancer project, which I'm currently working on, I have worked on this today, yes. Now, yesterday also I worked on it, but I forgot to mark it, so I can go back and I can just say, yes, I worked on it yesterday. YouTube podcast I'm working on today and I also worked on this on Wednesday. So these are the three days I worked on it. Workout I did today. I even did workout yesterday. I did on Tuesday as well and Wednesday as well. So I haven't missed any workout this week. Reading. I did a reading today. I also did reading on Tuesday. So you can just, so as you can see, reading, I have been lacking a lot in reading compared to workouts are going great. Uh, the project is going great. Personally, our project is going a bit low. YouTube podcasts are going great. So this is what I can keep track of. Uh, so this is, and also they have these widgets directly on my desktop. And this also helps me like see a, a glance on things. So yeah, habit kit, the plan is like 89 rupees per month. And I'm using that because I have to have uh, five projects. If you just want three or four projects, then you can be on the free plan and it works. Another very important app which I work on is Sessions. So Sessions is an app which technically worked as a Pomodoro for me. So if I have to, like as you can see right now, the timer is running. I set a timer that I'll be sitting for 55 minutes to record this video and edit my YouTube video. So what I have done, I have just set a timer. I started it and now it's running. It will tell me when the 55 minute mark will be done. So I know like, okay, I've been sitting here for 55 minutes. Either I have to take a break or I need to continue. I can just increase the plus five minutes. This is the first thing which I do when I come and sit in my computer in the morning is I open sessions. I start a 25 minute timer and I sit on any of these projects. So there are like reading a book, personal AI project, human app project, content creation or meditation. So these are the things which I manage with the sessions app. So if you want a, Pomodoro, a very clean Pomodoro, 
uh, sessions works really great now there are other apps which i would combine into one single like a category would be spotify chrome discord slack figma and clean shot so spotify is generally for like listening to music chrome is for browsing i never use safari then there is discord i am joined i have joined a lot of groups and i want to be part of them i definitely want to get all the latest updates discord is something which i install as well slack is for my personal work like i have joined couple of teams uh, that project which i'm currently working on is like the whole team sits on slack we share updates on slack slack is like a team messaging system uh, figma is something which i use for mostly designing so if i have to prod- type my app design something or design my landing page uh, even the thumbnails which i create for my youtube videos all of them i use figma so figma is an app which i have installed locally in my system so yeah figma is one thing which i use for mostly design another replacement of a screenshot tool which i use in my mac is clean shot i have paid for this app so this is like a replacement for taking screenshots generally when you take screenshots it's a default feature in mac os you can just press command shift 4 it takes the screenshots and even you can customize but clean shot makes it much better so one thing is all your record the like screenshots are stored in their history secondly you can edit them you can like uh, add okay let me just show you how this works so for example if i want to take a screenshot of this what i would do and here it will show me the 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 screenshot right now i can copy it and paste as an image anywhere i want to send or i can just press on this edit button and now i would say like hey see this is not working as it's supposed to or maybe hey this note is spelling is wrong hey this part is not working as expected as it's done and now i can copy with all the editing which i have done so again it adds like super power to the screenshot editor right now coming back to the final app which is always in my app is my own app that is human which i am currently building so the recording the screen recording which i am doing is happening with this app now the best part about this app is first like wherever i click on my screen it automatically zooms into those i do not have to edit them and wherever i move my mouse the the screen follows that path these kind of animations are done secondly it's completely free to use and it's uh, if you want to like download the videos you have to just pay for the subscription which is very less like 9 dollars a month it's currently in the beta internal phase we will be releasing it this month the plan was to release it last week but due to a lot of like internal issues we found out we thought it's better to just polish it a bit so currently we are doing that so yeah human will be one of the app which will be added into my arsenal from now so yeah these are, these are some of the apps which are always you will find there are a lot of other apps which i use like for coding there is like vs code i have to have in my system x code i have to have in my system uh but those are like development related i was wanted to focus more on the productivity stack which just makes me a better developer uh spend my time more productively in front of my computer so these are the most important 10 apps which i shared in this video so if you like this video uh, please subscribe i'll be creating another one and this is again a new type of video i wanted to make about the apps which i generally use when i'm working and yeah thank you so much for watching this video i'll be seeing you in the next one thank you so much